Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Don Singletary and today we're going to be talking about three things mostly. The first of those is uh, some tips on reading the MACD. It's our trade signal indicator. We're also going to talk about how important it is to keep a consistent trading setup. Use the same screen over and over again. It makes learning faster and a little bit easier and I'll be talking about uh, why that is. Also today, a trade of the week, and we're going to be emphasizing protecting your confidence while you're trading. All that and more coming right up. Stand by. If you're new to the channel, you probably, well, probably you don't know this yet, but I present a consistent setup with the trading software, and I suggest you do too with whatever platform you're using. I use Tastyworks here. Let me show you the three parts of the screen, and I'll keep them all consistent in all the videos here on the channel. Uh, first of all, there's the four micro e minis over on the left in a, in a uh, setup we call the watch list. It simply has the bid ask price and the uh, symbol and and how it's trading and what the index is trading at the, the quotes in other words. Also the quotes are up at the top of the screen here on the right side and here we have the candlestick charts. They're five minutes and down below we have a trade signal indicator and if you're new to software you're going to find out really fast. There's anywhere between 50 and 200 trading signal indicators in software. It's an amazing array. Now in spite of them being 100 or 150 of them they're all uh, created from the same eight bits of information, the open, close, and low, and high, and bid and ask price, and all those things. And we'll be talking about that. But, but it's important that you have a consistency when you're learning. Can you imagine if you went to tennis lessons Monday through Friday, and every day they changed the lines on the court, and it was different? Or if you had a math teacher, and, and uh, instead of one teacher for each five days, you had a, a different teacher each day with a different style and a different audiovisual method of teaching the math. And so that's what we try to do. I've been teaching one thing or another for over 30 years, and consistency is really important. It's really confusing when you try to learn to trade and you see a, a mouse jumping all over the screen and things changing every four or five seconds. It's very, very hard to follow. So I'm going to try to make it easy for you. Now, let me say, I'm not saying that the trade setup I use is the one you're going to be using for life. It's just a suggested starting place. That's all it is. And as you gain experience and knowledge as you go through trading, you're going to make some changes that will play to your own strengths and weaknesses. And that's just natural. But at first, I suggest you keep the trading setup, the signal indicator, the types of charts and everything's totally consistent because it'll be so much easier and faster for you to learn that way. I'm going to do something in this video that I've wanted to do for a while. Always I'm telling people how much focus and discipline and how much experience you need to be successful at this trading. And I'm cautioning people, you know, the main thing is don't lose your money while you're learning how to trade or you'll never make it. It has a, it is risky. You're using leverage of 30, 40, 50 to 1. And uh, you can lose money as fast as you can make it. But uh, hey, that's part of what makes it fun. And there are ways that you can learn and get experience. And I try to teach those here on the channel, at least at the beginner level, to get people competent enough that they don't lose all their money before they learn how. Now, I can't guarantee that, and neither can anybody else. But what I wanted to show you was how easy this type of trading looks to be. And uh, I'm going to tell you, this is a deceptive pitch I'm about to show you. Really, if I were to tell you that, um, that it were easy, I'd be not telling the truth. And if I told you that you could learn how to play the piano by watching somebody else do it, or drive a car by watching somebody else do it, or that you should learn to tightrope walk and start at 200 feet high instead of two feet off the ground, it, this stuff isn't rocket science. Let me show you. It really, the concept, the concept is very, very easy. Let me show you. Right here, I have the trading setup. This is the S&P 500 Micro E-Mini. And this day, I'm looking to get the dates and times right here, is uh, October 7th, 2021. 
Now, up in the top half of the screen here, we have the candlesticks. The width of each candlestick is five minutes. So if you count 12 of them in a row, that would be a time of one hour going forward. Now, this chart, all this trading that I'm about to show you has already happened. I, at this moment, have the genius of hindsight from 11.30 in that morning all the way back two hours earlier to 9.30 when the market opened. The market opens at 9.30 for at least an hour to 10.30 right here. It just goes almost straight up. You're trading at $5 a point. If you had bought one down here at $43.95 and you sell it up here at $44.15, you would have made a 20-point gain at $5 a point. That's $100. And all you had to do was to buy this contract as soon as the green line went over the red line. See that there? It happens around 945 or so. And then all the way up until the green line starts to come back down and cross below the red line. So you would buy here and you would get out of a trade somewhere here and you would have made about $100. Now, the S&P 500, it's a 500 stock average. We knew all about that. The MACD here in the lower pane, that's the Moving Average Convergence Divergence Indicator. And the settings on it are 12, 26, and 9. Those are the moving average um, interval links, uh, the ratio of those links that we use to get an exponential correlation of two moving averages. Now, that's a lot of garbly gook. If it makes your head spin, don't worry. You don't have to know how to build the MACD to be able to use it. I just showed you, it's easy. See the zero line here? Generally speaking, whenever, like from 9.30 all the way up until 10.30 here, it's all above this zero line. Okay, and the green line's above the red line. So it's going up. Now this looks so easy, but it's like having all the scores, the Monday morning after the weekend football scores, and you have them on the Friday night before. It's going to be easy for you to place bets and wins because why? You have the genius of hindsight. And this kind of trading looks deceptively simple and easy. But I promise you, it isn't. And all the subscribers, you have 10,000 plus subscribers here on the channel. Some have been here for as long as two years. And they're probably laughing right now about, oh boy, somebody thinks this is really going to be that easy. And I promise you, it isn't. It isn't because it looks easy only because on this chart, we have the genius of hindsight. And uh, I can't possibly explain to you in the next 30 seconds all the reasons why it's so much harder than it looks like it is. However, the point I'm making here is that the concept itself, the use, the use of this MACD, this trade signal indicator, and this five-minute candlestick charting right here, uh, the concepts are simple. They really are. They're easy to understand, but you have to know yourself. Trading happens between your ears more than it ha happens on the chart. It happens both places, of course, and that's what we do here on the channel, and that's why I bring a different trade every week, uh, so we can take it apart and see how we do without the genius of hindsight on these live trades that I record. And we're going to have one of those coming up in just a moment. Now, if you're new to the channel and you think this might be something you'd want to look into, uh, be sure and hit the subscribe button because uh, you'll get a notification of the new videos we put up each week. And if you want to see more videos like the one you're seeing today, uh, help me. I use the like button on the channel here as kind of a vote. If you want to see another video similar to the one you're seeing today, remember to uh, hit that like button for me. It helps me keep track of the things that, that uh, the viewers here on the channel uh, would like to see more of. And I'm always glad to hear your ideas in the comments below.
On the featured trade of the week, we do what I call a trade setup. It answers the questions, why this trade, why now, and how are you going to do it? Here we go. This trade today, the featured trade of the week, is going to be what I call a confidence builder. It's a short trade. You make a, a little bit of money, not a lot, but enough so that it gains you some confidence when you make these types of trades. Now, confidence is extremely important, and I don't mean ego. I mean the ability for you to be comfortable making decisions. I call that confidence. And to build up confidence, you're going to have to take some money on these smaller trades and be able to, to build on that and let your experience gather as you get more and more practice on these things. On the chart we saw a few minutes ago, we had the genius of hindsight. And with that, you have all the confidence of a Christian with four aces at a poker game. I mean, you're like, okay, I know exactly what I should do because I can see what the results would be. And in real trading, you don't have that, of course. You have to be able to make decisions before you have all the facts. Another way to put that, as I often say, is you have to, confidence in trading means you have the ability to make a decision before you have all the perfect information to make a perfect decision. And that is why this type of trading is, is not as easy as the genius in hindsight makes it look. I would even go one step further and say that protecting your confidence is just as important as protecting your account balance when you trade. Because when you lose confidence, you lose the ability to be comfortable making decisions before you have all the information you need to make that perfect decision. So it just stands to reason that you have to protect your confidence. Now, every time you do something that to yourself now, you call it a stupid mistake and, oh, I should have seen that, should have, should have, should have not done that at all. Uh, it chips away at your confidence. So making those good decisions builds confidence. And remember, you're going to lose about 40% of your trades, no matter how much confidence and no matter how good you are. So you have to keep that in mind. And this type of uh, trading, as I say over and over again, is very risky. It isn't for everyone. Now, in terms of holding on to your confidence, the, the, the vicious circle you do not want to get in is when you make a bad decision, you get behind in a trade. Now, according to what psychologists sometimes call the prospect theory, the, the more stress you're under making decisions, the less logical and the more emotional you're going to become. But what happens is every time you compound it by making another poor decision, your trades uh, get upside down. Now, we all feel it. As we're learning and even after you learn to trade, sometimes you'll think, wow, if someone else had just taken the opposite positions of me today, the way I traded, they would have made a lot of money. And that's the vicious circle that I'm trying to coach you to be able to avoid. Good decisions build confidence. More often than not now, this is how you get into that position is when you allow yourself to get impatient or lose focus and you start to uh, make trades that maybe weren't the trades you should have picked. And a few of those in a row can really, really erode your confidence and ruin your results. So um, learning to avoid that comes with experience. There's an old adage that says the way you learn to make good decisions is by making bad decisions. That's kind of a catch-22 of learning how to trade here. But the more discipline you have and the fewer times you allow yourself to go off and take risks that were not prudent to your trading, uh, the more you learn to avoid that, the higher your confidence will stay. So that's the payoff for your self-discipline and patience and emotional control is that in return for developing those characteristics within your trading and yourself, the payoff is you're going to be able to keep your confidence up. And with your confidence up, you are always going to make better decisions and more money. I'm telling you right now, the reason the failure rate is so high at this kind of day trading is because it's a very, very difficult thing to learn. It's very counterintuitive to, to guard yourself and make those careful decisions over and over and over again. It takes practice and patience and determination to a point. So I wish you good luck with that. 
Now let's uh, turn our attention over to the trend is your friend and the trend is down on this particular day. It's October the 4th. You see the market over here in the right uh, margin is trading uh, 42.79 and three quarters. And I'm going to enter this trade with a bracket order. I'll tell you more about that in just a moment. And you can see I click on the ask price up here and that takes me to an order screen. And I change one to two contracts that I'm going to short. Then I drag it over to the left side, click the chart button, and uh, I can look at the live chart now while I in, uh, input my stop loss price up there. You see 42.85. And I may change that in a moment. That would be about $50 up from the 42.80 or so where I'm trying to sell it. Close it a profit. You can put anything you want to in there. The market doesn't care. 42.72 is where I put. That would be seven points down or about $70 profit on this. And my stop now, notice I moved it down again at 42.83 now. And that uh, puts my stop loss at around the $22 to $25 area. And now I'm going to send the trade. Now look down in the text below the video for the bracket order where it says uh, OTOCO and you can see an entire video about how to do that bracket order thing. Now I'm adjusting the screen here. I just, uh, it's an idiosyncrasy. Each of us has our own little preferences. I like to kind of zoom in on my trade so I can uh, take a close look at exactly what happened and confirm what I've got and how I'm going to handle it now that it's underway. You can see my stops at 42.83, about uh, two and three quarters points up. So I'm risking $27.50 on the trade. Uh, I sold two contracts now. They're $5 per point each. So I'm trading at $10 per point. And right now, I'm uh, the market's trading at 42.81, 42.80.50 in that area right there. And uh, the trade is young. Now, this thing's not going to last very long. My target's way down there out of the way at 42.72. What I always am concerned about, first and foremost, is rule number one. I'm going to protect my capital here. So I don't want to really risk $27 if I don't have to. The thing's not very volatile here. But um, I look at it, consider it, and then put it right back where it was at 42.83. Just, just up enough to probably be out of the way. And the worst thing that can happen to me is I'll lose 27.50 on the trade, which is still going nowhere so far. But it's only been 30 seconds, so it takes a little while to develop, hopefully. And uh, my worst case is uh, getting stopped out up there at 42.83. Now, if you watch my videos, you know, my first priority is always how can I reduce the risk during a trade? So I've got my Tastyworks mouse out and I'm trading down at 279.50 now. So I just moved my stop down uh, to 42.82 and a quarter. And uh, I'm going to move it yet again. I'm trading down at 42.78 and a quarter now. So I moved my stop down there to 42.8150. So I'm only risking about uh, about $7.50 on this trade now. And that's what I like. I can take that loss easily if it happens. 42.78, 42.77. And um, I'm moving that stop down again here because I don't know how much money this uh, trade has to offer me right now. It sure isn't moving very fast. So I'm going to run a really close stop on it here. And I'm, uh, you can see I've got my, uh, my mouse out and moving that stop down again. I'm watching the quotes. We're trading 42.79 right now. And um, 42.78.50 is where my stop is now. 42.78.50. And I'm trading 42.78. That's pretty close. There you go. I stopped out right there. And uh, I can't help but notice, humans always do. Another five seconds. Genius of hindsight. Would have made another 10 bucks or more. But, uh, you know, what you see is what you get. Things like that happen all the time in this type of trading. Let's count the money. Okay, short trade, two and a half minutes. Uh, and uh, made a nice little profit for a, a quick trade there. Maximum drawdown was only $7.50. That's pretty good. Could have done better, maybe. Unrealized gain max was $42.50. I got $22.50 of it. 
And uh, that was a fun trade. It was really fast. Now, the reason I ran that stop so close on this trade was I didn't, I didn't have confidence that, that uh, there was really going to be a lot of money in the trade. The volatility kind of slowed down when I got into the trade. And uh, with just two points away, I could have given up my 2250 in five seconds and not even had time to react. So I decided to just go ahead and make it a good day and take the 2250. Thank you and move on. But I can't help but always look as I go by the end of a trade and see what would have, should have, could have happened had I stayed in it or did I get out enough or how was my intuition on the trade. Uh, well, I got lucky actually because look at this up here. I got out of a trade at uh, 121 and look at this chart at 124. I was back up at 42.82. And now let me refresh your memory. I shorted at 42.80.75 closed at 42.78.50 and less than three minutes later I'm back up to 42.82. Now I'd love to take credit for being that smart but I just got lucky folks that's all it is sometimes but at least I was there to get it right. We've covered uh, quite a bit of content in today's video so uh, remember to subscribe hit the like button Check out the book, all those things for me. I'm glad you were here today and I enjoyed uh, bringing this video and also the other hundred of them that are here on the channel. I'm Don Singletary. Thanks for being here today. I hope every day is a payday for you. Thank you.